I suck at AFL fantasy and I need your help. G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing a reveal of my AFL fantasy team. Now, like I said, I am pretty damn bad at fantasy, but it's one of those things that I like to keep doing because, you know, it's football related and it's a fun game, why not? So a few weeks back, I think AFL Fantasy opened for the 2024 season, so now you can get stuck in and make your team, which uh, reminds me, there is a league for True Footy this year. You can find the details of that in the description of this video. So what I'm gonna do is take you through my team, and to be honest, I want feedback as much as anything else. I'm not really trying to inform you guys about my fantasy team. As far as I'm concerned, it's very, very different from necessarily knowing a lot about footy. Like you can follow football religiously and be bad at fantasy. And that's kind of where I sit. So I kind of want some feedback from you guys. And further to that, I kind of want you to roast me. Like tell me which parts of my team are terrible. My defense sucks. I spend too much on my forward line. I know nothing about football. I'm a biased Eagles fan. I suck at YouTube. My footy content sucks. Now I'm 30, I'm starting to show signs of aging. You can see gray hairs. I haven't spoken to a female in months because I've been too busy making YouTube videos. I'm borderline incontinent. I spent too much money on mid prices in my backline. The fact that I have gingivitis. I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, no, so some honest feedback about the quality of my fantasy team. I'm gonna go through it together. We'll go through it line by line and uh, tell me where I can do it better. So naturally, we're gonna start off with the back line and I'll take you through the selections that I have. So I've gone pretty top heavy with the back line because I really like the options there. Uh, Nick Dacos was a no brainer. Obviously he is a high production player regardless of who he's gonna play and obviously getting him as a defender, I do understand the value of that rather than chucking him in the midfield. James Sicily is a marking machine. He's gonna load up on points and Jack Sinclair again has also become a really consistent player. So I just felt like between the three of them, if they can still stay healthy, I'm happy sinking that much money in because they do generally score a lot of points. Uh, let's look at the bottom line. So I like these mid-price ones from Fremantle. Hayden Young, for instance, uh, not only is he sort of on the verge of improving as a player and uh, potentially getting more consistent in terms of you know scoring a lot of points in terms of fantasy and getting a lot of the ball, he's also earmarked for a midfield move and probably will uh, see a fair bit of time at stoppages this year, which in theory will allow him to win more of the ball. But even as a defender, he's proven to be a pretty good fantasy player. Heath Chapman as well is another interesting one because he had uh, a injury ruined 2023. The year before that, from memory, was the one where he played pretty well. We had a game where he had 25 touches. Fremantle have a bit of a gap in terms of like their wingman, and I think Chapman has the attributes to push up the ground. So I feel like there's a chance we see more of Heath Chapman up the ground. Daniel Curtin as well, I just feel like is a player that will probably play round one, fairly ready made, earmarked for potentially some midfield time, but even as a loose sort of intercepting defender, which I think that's where he should start, I think he has the, the capacity to win a fair amount of the football as a sort of bottom price price player there. 279 is not quite 200K, but it's, uh, it's not far off it. So I think he's gonna be a bit of a cash cow. He'll load up on marks. He gets a lot of the ball for a tall player. The, uh, the bench options there, I was pretty, pretty comfortable with that. Toby Pink, again, that's questionable because uh, as a delisted free agent, I have him probably close to North's best 22, but I don't really know if he's going to play in round one. But at the baseline price of 200K, I think that makes sense. And the other one is Josh Gibkiss. Again, I think this one's a fairly safe bet. Another player who had a season ruined by injury last year, but had tw uh, 18 games in his first season and is a key position player, but still should in theory, uh, well, for a start, probably play round one from what I understand, but also just appreciate and value a little bit so I can uh, downgrade him at a later date. So that's the back line. Let's talk about the midfield. Before I get into that, uh, are you subscribed? Oh, you are? Okay, cool. Yes, check it. All right, let's talk about this midfield. All right, so as you can see, I've kind of put the top layer as the um, the higher priced players and that I like to visually organize my team. I've got a couple of mid prices there and a few, I guess you can call them cash cows as well. So we'll go, go through um, the bottom price ones at first. That's how I kind of start my teams. I always, you know, load up on the, the low cheap options that I think are players that I need in my team. And then I sort of top up with the, the top end players a little bit later on. So on the bench there, I'll start here. Jai Clark played one game for Geelong. What's his job security gonna be like in 2023? I'm not too sure. I know he had his injury battles and I'd like to see Geelong give him opportunity, but it is historically a team that 
plays as experienced players. So it's not an absolute guarantee, but I do think there's some real value there in Jai Clark. Hopefully he gets a crack early. Jeremy Sharp picked up as a listed free agent from the Gold Coast Suns to Fremantle. And again, with Fremantle's list gap there of a, of a wingman, I think there's a chance he, he gets games and hasn't played footy for a while. That one's a speculative one and, and one I might change. But if he's there in round one, it kind of makes it uh, valid. So then we'll talk about the, the young guys in this team. Well, there's five really young players in this, but the, the first year players. So Riley Sanders... Over time, I've started to really think there's a chance this guy will be a good chance for the Rising Star. I kind of undersold him a little bit in my video in the preseason. I just thought, as a pure inside mid, maybe he gets less looks at it. But since I made that video, Bailey Smith's done his ACL. And I just think this guy is so ready-made. I think he won their tr time trial as well. He'll get games early, and he's physically ready. So... I think that one's a pretty safe bet. Colby McKercher, again, I really hope they play him in round one because I think he's an absolute star. Harley Reid was actually the one I'm iffy on. And the reason being, I know he's a mid-forward, but I have picked him in as a midfielder because my forward line has a lot of mid-forwards in it as well, which I'll, I will get to shortly. But Harley Reid might be iffy because it depends on the role that the Eagles play him in because he plays as like a deep forward. He's not going to score very well, but he should get a little bit of a look at stoppages. If they're playing in the back line, then he's an absolute no-brainer. Mid-price options here I really like. So George Wardlaw, I've talked him up all preseason, and I think you know I think he played the eight games in his first season, but looks like the sort of player who, if they can get him fit and keep him fit, could really explode in output to, I don't know, potentially average 90 points a game. Again, like I'm not a fantasy expert, but I just think that's probably within his reach in his second season. And I think the same applies for Ruben Jinby, who... You know, had a really good debut season, kind of faded as the season went last year as he got tired and then ultimately had a season-ending injury about round 17. But he's looking in ripping Nick. There's, he's going to be given every opportunity at stoppage this year. And for him to improve on that value, I think it's a pretty safe bet, provided he stays fit. Then the Sam Walsh, I just kind of like this one because he ended the season so well. And I think he missed the preseason last year, missed the first month of the season uh, and ended it really well. So you just extrapolate that, probably entering his prime, high production player. And if he gets a full preseason in, look out. Um, same thing with Jack Steele. I know that he's had a couple of injury interrupted off seasons um, in previous years. So in theory, like I think I was watching that his break even is about 97 or that's what they've like priced him as. And I think he can easily eclipse that if he has a full preseason. Tom Green's a bit of a no-brainer there because he's just such a high-volume player. Um, so it's a pretty young midfield, to be honest, but uh, I like the mix of that. Then we'll go to the Rucks. I really wanted to include Tim English because he's pretty damn consistent. And uh, I think he was the best fantasy player in the league last year, uh, which means I should probably make him captain. I might change that. I think I've got Dacos captain as it currently stands. I did want to go with the Marshall and English combo, but I decided to go for Grundy because... He's got really good job security. I don't think he's going to get dropped from Sydney unless he has an absolute nightmare. And we know that he can score pretty heavily in fantasy. So at, uh, what is it, 670K there? I think that's a really good value option uh, in Brody Grundy. I think that one's a safe bet. As for the bench ruck, you know, I never really like spending too much money on these because the ones that are like cheap enough to put on the bench usually don't crack a game. So uh, I went for Finn Barmaley because I I've had more fans talking him up in the comments section this off season. They picked him up in the rookie draft. I think he's a little bit mature. Like he's at least 20, I think. I could be wrong. But probably the best bet of anyone are, are like priced around that range. So I'm happy with that. Before I get into the forward line, have you liked the video? You have? Sweet. Cool, just checking. <laughs> It was crazy of me to assume you hadn't liked the video. All right, the forward line is a bit of a mixed bag, but I really like these mid-forward, mid-priced options, some of them anyway. So first of all, Jack McRae has forward status. Again, the logic being that potentially we see more of McRae in his usual role uh, with the absence of Bailey Smith, and I'll back him in to get a little bit more of the ball than he did last year, because obviously I think he, from memory, disappointed a little bit when it comes to fantasy. But as a forward mid, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. Same thing with Sam Flanders. I'm just sort of backing him in uh, on a gut feeling that he will continue the development we saw in 23 and become a high volume player in that midfield mix. It would be great to see him do that. He's only 22, so he should extrapolate that form, but that one's a little bit of a punt. Elijah Sardis, again, a little bit of a punt, but I really think even at 476, like that's fairly expensive. This kid was a very high production player when he was a draftee. Played four games, obviously uh, battling injury um, over the last year or two. But I do think SNM will give him games, and I think he will play in the midfield, and I think he will far and exceed that value. So I like that one. Finley McRae is, again, a bit of a punt because I understand that he is on the brink of like forcing his way into this Collingwood side, but at the same time, Collingwood are in contention, and it's going to be a hard midfield to break into. 
So Rogue Riot, I'm directing this at you. If Finley McRae doesn't have a great season and isn't in the team by round one, I am going to be very upset. Uh, then, you know, the, the shorter priced options there, in, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> Nick Watson and Sean Manor. Sean Manor for a start, I think is an absolute no brainer at 200K. I just feel like Geelong will pick him and play him because he was, uh, well, like the best player in the VFL last year, right? And uh, absolute gun player in that grand final. He gave like six goals. Was that the grand final? It's amazing how much I've forgotten about footy, even though I haven't stopped making content. It's just time flies. But either way, absolute no-brainer. Nick Watson as well, I have a feeling will play went round one. But again, that one's a little bit of a punt. And a lot of these like rookie options will shuffle around closer to round one because we'll have a better feel for who's likely to get picked or not. Then on the bench, I've got Orazio Fantasia. I don't know if he's likely to play round one, but at that price, like that's basically a draftee price and we know he can hit the scoreboard. So I think that's a pretty safe bench option. And Jed Walter, again, as a key forward, I'm not expecting him to score a lot of points this year and I might switch switch that out for like a Dersma or something like that, who in hindsight might've been a better option. But I do think Jed Walter might find his way into this uh, Gold Coast side earlier than we expect as a key forward and just appreciate. He doesn't need to uh, like keep bags and score me hundreds every week, but I do think it's a worthwhile bench option. Um, and again, I might I might switch that around for Dersma, who knows. And the final spot in the team is that uh, extra bench spot we, which you can use as a utility. And I've given that to Caleb Windsor again. Why Windsor and not another player? Again, this will play out because I don't know how close Windsor will be to the team in round one. I'd like to see him play round one. He's also got mid-forward status, so as a dual position player, he's got a little bit more flexibility as if I use them in that particular role. So that one's just a punt. But overall, guys, I want you to let me know your honest thoughts on this team. Where can I improve it? Uh, let me know what you've gone with. As always, I appreciate you guys watching the content, supporting the channel. You've been absolutely fantastic this uh winter here but summer over there this off season generally uh it's been a lot of fun so i appreciate you guys being here and especially all the new people as well thank you very much for jumping on board i've just realized i left the laptop open halfway through this video i had to go check something it was checking who my utility sub was not uh following up on my gingivitis appointment but anyway thanks very much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video cheers